I've been modding for 18 years now, so it's time to make the jump to the next clear job, becoming a real indie game dev. And thanks to modern simulation software like Game Dev Tycoon, I get to finally see what it would look like if I were to leave the world of Empire or modding and turn all of our projects and some new ideas into their own video games for people to buy so I can get actual money. Though by actual money, I of course mean Canadian money, which Americans like to make fun of despite how much better ours looks. After moving into my new garage office, which is inaccurate since I have no plan to buy a car, I started my first game, which was of course based on our first mod, our Galactic Civil War era mod when it was called Empire of the Hand, so none of you have heard about it unless you're also really old. I had to do historical strategy since, like real indie game devs, I'd have to research what sci-fi was about to make a sci-fi strategy game. Since this was one of our first releases, we didn't have any story yet, and following old restrictions we had no ability to change the engine so everything is getting injected straight into that sweet, sweet gameplay. Next, we poured some of the development resources into some level design and narrative with the maps, but there's not much talking or text to worry about, and finally we started on the world design and graphics. We barely had any sound available, so that gets dropped way down too. Now that all of the decisions were made, development went exactly how it does when making a mod. Little bubbles popped up from my head and went to different categories until it was time to release. So at least so far, this whole game development thing was exactly what I was comfortable with from modding. The bugs were fixed, the release went out, and the reviews started rolling in, with highlights calling the game okay and not much fun. Which is great because that means there's at least some fun. So really, things are going better than I'd expected. I quickly wanted to follow this up with a standalone re-release of the first version of Imperial Civil War, our second mod for the post-Endor era, which people actually did play, and still do play under the current name of Thrawn's Revenge. This went even more poorly, and one very important lesson was learned. We shouldn't forget about Engine. How could I forget about Engine? The reviews were providing a lot of very valuable feedback, and we got a note that apparently you can't just release the same thing again and again. So I decided to drop the Empire at War mods into the first version of Ascendancy, our mod for Sins of a Solar Empire, taking us far away from the stale genre of historical strategy into the brand new landscape of historical simulation, with an emphasis on simulating military conflicts, but we don't need to advertise that because the game never asked. Technically, going to a new game means there's new engine stuff being done, sort of. And this meant rave reviews were definitely about to come in. Ascendancy's name was in lights and the industry was abuzz, praising how it was very good and could have been better. Knowing how key it was to not just keep releasing the same thing time and time again, we moved on to the first version of Fall of the Republic. Since you do get to choose how your factions develop by picking either Order 65 or Order 66, this clearly means we're breaking into the evolution theme, a brand new area and not in any way similar to prior strategy games we'd done. Level design and AI took center stage as the new AI changes were implemented along with a bunch of new models and sound. So I'd hoped that I had a winner on my hands and I'd escape from the fumes this car was putting off before too long. Sadly the result was only fun at stages, while another more positive review graciously said that strategy games work well on the PC. And this is the kind of very helpful feedback after release that you always hope for but can never really expect. When someone is so clearly and thoughtfully engaging with something you've put out, nothing really makes you feel better. It was time to take this experimentation even further. So far I'd only stayed on the comfortable strategy and simulation grounds, and this time we were going to go way farther afield. Revan's Revenge, with its Sith alchemy-based monsters, was going to be a mad science strategy game, something totally new and different, and in no way similar to anything else we'd ever done before. Sadly, we still only had 2D graphics, as we hadn't made a new engine ourselves yet, or researched 3D graphics, but with a balanced approach between gameplay and the engine, as well as graphics, sound, and world design, I hoped we'd have at least something our 148 fans would enjoy, if not the Ivory Tower elites at all games and other reviewers. Even with all this creativity, they were pretty solidly in agreement that Revan's Revenge wasn't good, recycling their reviews of our previous games the same way we'd been recycling assets, so I couldn't exactly be mad. Giving the industry one more try before giving up and going back to work for the government or something, it was time for the next release of Thrawn's Revenge. This time it was all gameplay, a little bit of engine, and no narrative, just like every historical strategy game should have. Then level design and AI were balanced against each other, and as little dialogue as possible was put in, supported by all the graphics we could throw into this still 2D game. The big change this time was that the media was finally interested, and word got out with an interview that we were targeting mature audiences, not those kids who clearly didn't appreciate strategy games. Finally, with the second release of Thrawn's Revenge, I got what I'd wanted for so long. All games had given me the approval I so deeply craved, calling the game enjoyable. 
we clearly gone as far as we could with the engines on the market, so it was time to make our own, expanding Pox's deep core framework, which is apparently a game engine now, in order to allow things like save games, which I hadn't realized people didn't have in prior versions of the mod, but which hits particularly close to home, considering how often Empire at War bugs cause save issues. We're getting further and further from direct recreations of the mods, as the first installment of any game on Deep Core, which is a coding framework Pox made for Empire at War, was going to be Ascendancy 1.1, which wasn't for Empire at War at all. But this new history simulation installment was going to have this second generation of 2D graphics, and absolutely no save game since I forgot to press that button. Gameplay, engine, and AI seemed like the places to go with these, with evenly balanced graphics, sound, and world design. And much like its mod version, Ascendancy was a certified hit. The reviews of 9 and 10 from others were great, but what would dad, I, I mean all games, have to say? And there it was, outstanding achievement. There was still time for one more game in this office. We could move on from Ascendancy to see if people would like Thrawn's Revenge even more on this new Deep Core engine. This time while working on gameplay, meaning moving a slider up and down again just like how you'd work on it in real life, I actually remembered to turn on save games and tutorials. So how could we not make an even better game with all that enabled? AI was then also the big focus, with a bit of attention to level design and absolutely no dialogue, and a lot of graphics. The sales of our prior games had meant we'd made it. I was going to be able to wait for reviews to roll in from my brand new, car-free office, having raked in over a million dollars from prior releases though I of course still brought the exact same office chair with me. This is definitely not accurate, because if I was putting together a new office, then I would definitely replace my chair first, since it looks like it was pulled out of a landfill. I sat across the room from the golden chart for RPG level design and boss placement, crucial for our strategy game work, and finally got the reviews. I no longer cared what all games had to say, since they already liked me, but everyone else liked the game too, and we had 1.6 thousand fans, which immediately grew to over 4,000. Definitely enough to sustain this probably expensive, presumably downtown office, but I had done it. With these rave reviews, and my escape from the garage, I was finally free. Thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed the video. There is actually a new Thrawn's Revenge release as well, so if you're watching this after April 2nd, you can actually go play that already. Special thanks as always to the patrons who are the real all games, but I still crave your approval.